We've been doing a lot of videos on using Zoom lately as so many of us are gravitating towards it as a video conferencing tool and as we're learning to be more productive in a video conferencing and distance environment. Uh, today, I wanna talk about using Zoom with our mobile devices, which is really one of my favorite ways to use Zoom. You can host and participate in Zoom calls using your iPhone or Android phone or on your tablet. I've got a tablet computer here, I've got an iPad Pro. So I'm gonna show you how you can participate and how you are not a second class citizen in any way, shape or form if you jump on a Zoom call in one of your mobile devices. That's today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And we've been getting a lot of interest and a lot of traction on our videos on using Zoom, which by the way, we have several. There's a playlist that's uh, that you can click on down in the description below or at the end of this video that will walk you through a variety of different tutorials that we have on using Zoom. But one of the ways that I really like to use Zoom is not necessarily on your desktop or your notebook computer, although it's perfectly acceptable to be using Zoom in those environments. But I like for a lot of us to consider using our mobile device, especially our smartphone to use Zoom, or if you are lucky enough to have an iPad or a good tablet, to use that as your interface for connecting on Zoom. And not just as a participant, but you can actually host and control meetings using these tools. Uh, one of the benefits of using the mobile devices is it frees up your computer for doing other work if you need to be doing things while you're kind of auditing a webinar or, a, or an online meeting. But the other factor is that the cameras and the microphones that we have built into our mobile devices, especially our smartphones, are pretty good quality. So they often end up being better than what we have, especially if we're using built-in webcams and built-in microphones and notebook computers. Plus, it's really easy to tether in our headset on our mobile device as well. And you have, of course, far more location fluency, fluid, fluid, fluidity. You can move around the house. You can be working and doing other things while you're on a Zoom call. If you're on your smartphone, you can be even going for a walk. You could turn off the video. You could use your mobile connection if you have a good data plan and you can participate in audio while you're out and moving about. All of those options are open if you use your smartphone or your tablet and Zoom as, as your Zoom interface. So let's dive into it. Let's start by looking at using our smartphone. Okay, let me show you how to set up a Zoom call from your smartphone, from an iPhone in this particular case. When you open it up, you have the choice along the top to create a new meeting, join an existing meeting, schedule an upcoming meeting so you can plan and book a meeting, or you can also have a share screen option right here. Uh, but if you just want to start a meeting just straight away, uh, we're just going to create a new meeting and it'll create the brand new meeting for us. Now it can use our personal room or we can create a brand new room, which we're gonna do. And it allows us the option to have the video on or not as we start the conference. Uh, because we're on the mobile phone, occasionally we're gonna want to do a Zoom call perhaps just over the cellular network and we don't necessarily want to have uh, the video on because of bandwidth constraints. So you can start just an audio conference with the, with the camera off. Here as well, you can choose to dial in, which I've never done, where you phone in over a, a standard telephone line or you use the internet audio and video, which is exactly the way that I wanna do it right here. So here we have my feed through of the uh, of the Zoom call to so what started. It's just me. It's a lonely Zoom call at this point. But now we have to get participants in to the call that we started on our phone. Uh, and if we look along the bottom, there's a participants button. We're just going to tap on that participants menu. And there, if we look again at the very bottom of the screen, we can choose to invite people in. We also have the option here to chat. And when you're in a call, going into this participants tab will allow you to do things like mute and unmute people so you can control your attendees, some of your attendees' privileges here as well. But I'm gonna tap on the invite button here. And here's a place that I have had fails myself in using Zoom. For some reason, when I've just sent an email to somebody using this, it is, uh, often the people don't seem to get the email. There seems to be some issue with it. Or, or using the invite contacts, some of the automated systems. So I just go old school. I copy the URL of the, of the Zoom meeting, and then I go into email or into messaging or whatever connection you can reach out to your people with, and I'm just gonna send this to myself as a quick email right now. I've sent that. So now I'm going to go into my email on my computer. I'm gonna open that link, and we will be able to see the call that we originated here on our smartphone in both, on both the computer 
and on the phone at the exact same time. So this should be super exciting. Let me go back to Zoom here. And there it is. There's the Zoom link. I am going to launch. I'm going to first of all turn down the speaker here because I know we're going to get some echo. And I'm also going to mute the speaker on my monitor or my, you know, my computer here because we would get that terrible feedback loop if we didn't. All right. Do I want to open the Zoom meeting? I do indeed. And so now we should be jumping into a meeting. Ah, there we go. Where I've got me on the computer and I've got me, let me just turn that down, on the phone as well. So there we have it. And the microphone isn't completely muted. So let me mute myself here. So there, now it won't come through. That's good. And do you see how it muted actually on my, on my smartphone at the same time as I muted it here? Watch, I will unmute. Mute. Ah, so we see we have that. So if I close down the participant screen now, now I can see what it looks like here from the smartphone. And if I am in portrait mode like this, it appears in portrait mode on the computer. If I turn to landscape, it, it widens out a bit and we see the feed there. And I see this, we see the second feed now. I should change the angle a little bit so it looks a little bit different. But you see the second angle here where you can see my computer feed or the, the guest's feed in the screen. Now, of course, screen real estate is very dear on the smartphone. So managing things like the different, uh, the different assets that we have within the call are a little bit different on the smartphone. Obviously on the computer, it's so easy for me to open a chat window and to chat away just using the keyboard. But in the, as far as the, uh, as far as we're concerned, when we're on the smartphone, if we gonna want to go into participants and there, if I tap on chat, up comes the chat window, but you see you lose the entire main window at that point there. And, and so you can enter and you can enter the information into the chat here. And of course it appears in the, in the, in the chat overall. So you have the same permissions. It's just you're far more limited as far as what you can see on the screen at the same time. In the participant screen here, if you're hosting a if you're hosting a call, this is where you can turn on and off permissions for people. And also, very important here is you can mute everybody, or you can unmute everybody, which will allow you to control all of the all of the audio in a call, so that you're not getting a lot of crosstalk and those sorts of things happening there as well. So that gives you some nice basic permissions right here. But is there more? Why, yes, there is. For example, if we go into the sharing content screen, it's a little bit different than we have on our desktop, but here you can share images from your photo library. You can share content from your iCloud Drive or Dropbox. So you could share a slideshow or other content that you have stored somewhere else in the cloud using these 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 features here. Uh, and as well, you could share a website. You could actually go to a website and share that information there as well. So you've got some of the same features. Under the more menu, what do we have here? We have the ability, oh, this will allow us to jump into the meetings itself, into the meeting settings, so you can adjust the settings. They allow the virtual background here. Now, we've shown you the virtual background in another video on our, we've shown that to you on our, uh, on, using it on the computer, but I wonder how it looks here. Pretty much the same kind of things. Can I try and work? There it is. It's the same kind of idea. It doesn't, I don't see that it has the option to use a green screen, but you can indeed use a virtual background if you choose. Now, this works, I think, really well as a participant, using the smartphone as a participant. A little bit cumbersome hosting a meeting, not quite as good if you're hosting a meeting, uh, but still pretty, pretty serviceable. And of course, using the microphone and using the camera on your smartphone does a really good job of delivering. Oh, I got to turn off that virtual background. I hate those virtual backgrounds by and large. None. That would be the choice. There we go. But, you know, the quality is really good. And uh, certainly if you plug in a headset, uh, you're going to even improve the audio quality here. And you can set up, uh, you know, set it up on a tripod so that you can work away on your computer if you happen to have a computer and you want to be working on. Or you could also have this completely set up and as, a, as your only interface if you're in a place where you don't have access to a computer. It still allows you to participate as a participant in Zoom calls or in this case here, as even the host of a Zoom meeting, all on your smartphone. Pretty cool. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we are going to bring another mobile player into the game. And let me show you here. I'm going to take the, take the feed here and turn around so you can see. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see that I've got here. Come on, flip the camera. There it is. 
This is the 11 inch iPad Pro. And as you can see, we've got Zoom running on it as well. And it is the iOS version is pretty much identical in both the iPad and on the smartphone, on the iPhone. Uh, just you have the advantage of some extra real estate when you're on the iPad, but the same kind of functionality. So let's just take a quick look at it, shall we? If we go in and we take a look through the through the main menu, of course we can join an existing meeting, start our own meeting, or let's even just show you, just so you know, you can schedule a meeting as well here. If we go into the schedule, you can create a schedule, invite people into it, and actually plan and do the kind of the organizational structure that you need. And that is of course available on the smartphone as well as on the desktop version. Uh, so you have the ability to schedule the meetings as well. You also have here the ability to screen share, which I will show you in just a moment. I'll show you on the iPad, I think it gets way more exciting than on the iPhone. I'll show you why in just a moment. Uh, but first, let's go and let's actually join the existing meeting that we have going. So I'm going to go into that same email. I'm going to launch it. And so now this same meeting that we were just in, that's all been started a few moments ago on our iPhone, we are participating in with all of our different devices. So let me just mute this. There we go, so that now is muted. So here we've got, if we can see that we've got the ability to, uh, instead of having all of the menu items along the bottom, the menu items along the top, and we have to kind of tap on the screen in order to access them. But what I wanted to show you was the whiteboard option on the iPad, because this is where it sets itself apart. The chat is the same, sharing files is the same, all of those things. But the whiteboard on the iPad is a bit of magic because I've got the newer iPad using Apple's Pencil, and I can I can illustrate really nicely on the, uh, uh, using this. So if I, I can just put it, I can lay it flat down, and you can make notes. If you're a math teacher, you can be doing equations. You can have all of that ability to be able to create that kind of content. You can copy and paste. Of course, you can type onto the whiteboard. But using the stylus, especially for instruction for teachers uh, on the iPad, I think that's one of the real magic pieces of using the iPad in this environment. So there you've got it though, regardless of which platform you want to participate in a Zoom call on your smartphone, on your computer, or on your tablet, which adds some extra magic, you can be an equal participant in a Zoom conference call in any and all of these environments. As I promised off the top of this video, if you decide to participate in video conferencing using Zoom on your smartphone or your mobile device, you are not a second class participant at all. You can participate fully in the entire experience and contribute to your community. Now, before we leave, I'm gonna ask you a couple of different favors. The first favor I'm gonna ask is if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please leave us a, Farley, go, go sit down. I'm trying to wrap up my video here. Can you let me do this? I'm gonna try it again. You wait and I'll talk, okay? Just, just hold two secs. I hope you found today's video to be useful. And if you have, I have a few favors to ask of you. The first favor is if you could, you, I would appreciate you giving us a thumbs up and liking this video and sharing it with others if you think it will be valuable to them. Secondly, if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you have any comments or suggestions, put them in the comments below. I read them all and I respond to just as many as I possibly can. Till next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.